Hello everyone, this is Tammy Fisher within the doll world and I'm excited to be here today. And I'm here with my beautiful, wonderful co-host, Miss Georgette Taylor. Hey everybody. Hello, Miss Georgette. <laughs> and today's wonderful guest who we are just honored to have, <laughs> Dr. Lisa of the world of Epi. And many of you probably know her with her fresh dolls and the fresh doll squad. So thank you, Dr. Lisa, for joining us today. Oh my gosh, it is truly my honor to be on your show. Yay. Thank you. Yeah, we feel the same way. It's, yes, it's all you. this love going back and forth. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Dr. Lisa, we're going to start with the, the question that we start with everyone. And that is, tell us your doll journey. We want to know, you know where it began and how it led to you being where you are today. You know, it began unexpectedly. Um, I was a college professor um, and I was actually the highest ranked college professor and I was really enjoying what I did. I was mm -hmm. teaching graduate students, PhD students, MBA students and business executives, having a great time. But I was also doing a line of books for children, uh, books that included all children. It was a multicultural book and it included children of African-American, Asian, Latina, Caucasian, because I wanted to show the diversity of this of our of our country. So we started with a line of books. And I had been asked to do a line of dolls in the image and likeness of the book. And I said, like any smart person would say, I said, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> because I exactly. know nothing. I know less than nothing about creating dolls. So no, don't I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but then as life or the universe would have it, I was at home watching a documentary on an updated doll study. And in the updated doll study, they were asking these beautiful black and brown children, which dolls they want to play with, the white doll or the black doll. Now, clearly we all know, all of us being doll aficionados know about the original doll study in the fifties and sixties, where they'd ask black children, which mm -hmm. doll do you want to play with and be friends with? And they all picked a Caucasian doll. That's understandable given what was going on in our history. But now, fast forward to 29, 2009, 2010, I'm sitting there halfway watching the show because I'm thinking, I know how this is going to turn out, right? Because at this mm -hmm. point, we had mm -hmm. a president, African-American president in the White House, they had a beautiful first lady, they had the beautiful girls, and you know, we were pictured on magazine covers. So I'm like, this is going to be different. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Sadly, weren't. it wasn't yeah. different. Beautiful. Chocolate, dark skinned little girl said she wanted to play with a white doll. Mm -hmm. But what really broke my heart is when she said, Why? And she said she wanted to play with the white doll because the black doll's skin was nasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always have to pause because mm -hmm. it broke my heart then and it still touches my heart now. But then mm -hmm. she went a, a step further and she literally touched her own hand as to indicate that her skin was nasty. Wow. And so that's when the world of EPI was born. Mm -hmm. That's when I said, I got to do this. I, this little girl and all little girls like her cannot believe that they're less than or their skin is not beautiful because there's no doll that represents who they are. Mm -hmm. so that day I started. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's, that's one of those stories that we keep hearing, some mm -hmm. version of that. And, and that's, I think, one of the reasons that motivates us to do what we do too, is we keep hearing that story. And so we will meet people who... Naya Dorsey, you know, and she's saying, I created these dolls because I couldn't find a doll for my daughter. I mean, Taufik Okoye with the Queens of Africa. I created them because I'm in Nigeria mm -hmm. and I can't find a reasonably priced, beautiful doll that's black for my niece. So that story is being played out all over the world. Unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. we've got, you know, Alma's doing it too with people. I'm a guy, she's in Britain and she also is in um, Ghana and Senegal, same story. And with her, she, she's having, Alma actually gives away dolls and there are children who will not accept a free doll. She gives away Barbies. However you feel about Barbie, however you feel about Mattel, I think we can all agree that Barbies are attractive. We're not gonna say that they're ugly dolls. And that's what these kids are saying. I don't want that ugly black doll. Mm. So yeah. we've got a long way to go. We've got mm -hmm. a long way to go. And, 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 you know, and I know parents are struggling with that very, 
various question, right? Um, how yes. do I educate my child yes. about her and his beauty and his handsomeness? Mm -hmm. And and that's what we try to do here is we try to create dolls and books, but primarily dolls, so that children have the so that the parents have in their parenting toolkit mm -hmm. dolls that they can pull out and say, see her hair, see her skin tone, see her full lips. Those look like you. Isn't this mm -hmm. doll beautiful? Isn't this doll pretty? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to help parents to educate their child about who they really are. And, and I do agree with what you're saying. I mean, I, we do a lot of uh, dolls in mass market, but we do give a lot. And we give dolls away. We have, we have a sponsorship uh, with an a orphanage, in, well, actually three orphanages in Nigeria. Nice. We also nice. give children. Because nice. these are children who have been harmed in some ways, so physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. and they need to know who they are. But then what adds injury to it is, as you just said, there are no beautiful black dolls in Nigeria. Crazy. It's like, if someone told me that before, I'd be like, no, that's all it should be <laughs> in Nigeria, our beautiful black doll. Right. Yeah, you yeah, would, you would definitely true. think that. But the stories that we do hear, it just does really blow our minds that yeah. um, it's still very limited and it's just not seen. And I think... Um, you know, having people like you on to talk about why it's so important and why it needs to be seen and why you're creating dolls that, you know, that need to represent uh, all different, all different uh, uh, diversity within the, you know, within, within the, the doll community. I think it's so important that you're still doing the work that you're doing, you know, yeah. with these dolls, because it still is a conversation that is still very much needed. And, and the fact that you create these like kits for parents to help them, along the way, because I think that is, that is so important because it really, you know, at the end of the day, when a child's not feeling wanted, you know, you, the parent is the person that that child should be able to go to, you know, to say, hey, you are accepted and you are loved. And mm -hmm. how can I help guide my child to, you know, understand that she is beautiful and not just because I say she is, but it is because she is, or he is, you know, handsome and, and, and talented. So, um, mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I did want to. I did want to ask you though. I, I was um, in the things that I read about what you do with your company. One thing I thought that was really interesting was that you said that every skin tone is customized and customized and blended. And I thought that was just so powerful because I don't think people understand the the nuances, right, of the coloring of this you know beautiful community that we have, being uh, you know um, African American and African. Um, so why did you think that that was so important? Because, you know, there's plenty of dolls out there. Like you said, you can change the shade and maybe get a little lighter, a little darker coloring from a, from a Caucasian doll. But why did you want it to be so customized and blended? Why did you feel that that was so important? You know what? It goes back to that little girl on that interview, because what she was saying is she didn't want to play with a black doll because the black doll skin was nasty. So that is like why it was so important to get the skin tones right. And you're mm -hmm. right. We come in a beautiful, diverse skin tone uh, range and we have different undertones. So we're mm -hmm. just not light, medium, dark. You know, right. it's like, do you have yellow undertones or blue or red or, you know, what, what is your undertone? So when I'm mixing to come up with the colors of the, of the doll skin tone, that's what I'm trying to do. I want to make sure that there's skin tones that are neutral. There are skin tones that have a little bit more coolness, some that has a little bit more warmth, so that in this array of skin tones that we're creating, a mother or father, aunt, a, a grandmother can find a doll skin tone that reflects their angel in their life. That's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. That's powerful. Yeah, yes. that's so powerful. When, it I, is. when I heard that, I was like, that is so, like, that's the one thing, I mean, I mean, I, I admire you for everything that you've done in this oh. community, but that one thing stuck out in my head so clearly because I just yes. think that is so it's wow it's uh, really powerful that you did it, it that is. way yeah I love that well you know that little girl who I've never met who's probably now an adult with perhaps <laughs> children of her own <laughs> this was but 20 oh not 2009 um but I'm imagining that little girl and that little boy sitting on the floor playing with their dolls or their fresh squad and so <laughs> What do they need? What do they need to see who they really are? What do they need for him to know that he is powerful and he is brilliant and he is mm -hmm. just amazing? What does she know need to know that she's, again, brilliant, beautiful, smart? What do they need? And so they need dolls that reflect that. That's why our mm -hmm. dolls all have articulation because mm -hmm. when they're playing with the doll, I want them to be able to envision and imagine what they can be in life. I don't want them to have any limitations. So mm -hmm. that's why we do articulation. That's why there's a skin tone. 
Again, we come a wide variety of hair textures and hairstyles. Right. That's why we make sure that there's as we, look- as we can see right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. As we can see right now. Yes, we have different colors too. So exactly. That's it. That is true. And then, of course, let's not forget the facial features, right? Yes. Look at all of our beautiful, not only our beautiful skin tone, but look at our features, right? Mm-hmm. Some of us have full lips, mm-hmm. beautiful noses, dark eyes, some have light eyes, whatever. I just want a parent, again, a relative, a loved one, to be able to find something that represents who that child is that they're looking for, mm-hmm. to find that, that particular doll that they say, yes, this looks like my niece, my daughter, my, my right. granddaughter, et cetera. Yeah. And more importantly, for the child, who sees the doll and says, mama, mama, this doll looks just like me. Yeah. That is the greatest, you know, I have been blessed. I thank God. I have been blessed with so many things in my life. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest joys I get is when I see a child, a boy or a girl run up to our dolls and say just that, that this Mm -hmm. doll looks just like me. That is my greatest. That's the greatest gift I receive is when I, when I hear and see that. Yeah, that's so yeah, that's, so, that's amazing. so powerful. Yes. I love it. It is. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question. I know Tammy probably have a couple of questions, but I, well, I want to no, ask ahead. you a question. <laughs> when you were growing up, did you play with dolls? Was that something that you did, or that something that your parents allowed you to do, or did you find dolls that you that you enjoyed playing with as a, as a child yourself? Yes, I did enjoy playing with dolls. Um, I played with dolls for quite a long time, uh, <laughs> but I will tell you. Um, my parents did do a, uh, they did a really good job of trying to find dolls that had brown skin. Of course, they didn't have the features like us. They didn't have mm-hmm. the hair texture, but, right. but there weren't just many for them to select from. But yes, mm-hmm. my sister and I, we had dolls. Um, I started playing with dolls early as, as did my sister, but then I gradually grew out of dolls. My sister, on the other hand, who now works with me, started, continued to play with dolls, I think almost into her preteen, like 11, 10, 12, because she just loved dolls. So we always had dolls around us. Um, I moved into, into books uh, after dolls. I kind of moved into books and reading and teaching. I would sit my stuffed animals <laughs> and dolls <laughs> around and I would teach them the day's lesson that I learned in school. So yeah, I play with my dolls a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. That's that full is. circle, full circle for you. It is. <laughs> circle. Dolls and teaching. Okay. Yes. Books. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, well, you, you spoke about the books. So what what's happening with the books? Well, we are going to be doing books again, but right now okay. we're focusing on expanding our dolls, our doll line. Okay. So we started with the books. Like I said, the okay. books um, is what we started mm-hmm. with. And then we uh-huh. were asked to do, like I said, dolls in the image and likeness of the books. And okay. so we gradually moved in that direction. But I okay. do want to come back and incorporate more books in, um, in our line. That's great. That's great. Because I, I think that it's important... Like you were saying, when you take your you took your stuffed animals and you played school with them, I think that one of the things that attracts us to reading is when we see someone who looks like us. So when we see books with brown people in there, we can relate to them, and and I think that that's we're living through just a really interesting time because I I can remember, you know, as a kid and the shows that you saw. And there were very few shows that had, you know, people looking like us and the brown people, uh, black people, they, very few shows. And so we grew up with the, the norm for family being like Leave it to Beaver or, you know, the, these white families where everything was perfect. You know, the mother was perfect. The house was perfect. Everything was like this perfect thing. And then that's not what was going on in our house. You know, and as you grow up, you've learned that that wasn't happening in anybody's house. Anyone's house, exactly. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you didn't see anybody on the show. I mean, there was nobody looking like you. So I think that it's that we're growing up in a really powerful time because we are seeing people on TV who look like us. We are seeing people who are striving and who are thriving and just doing great things. And I think that the more of us who are out there and the more of us who are portrayed Mm -hmm. like in the books or with the dolls who are being able to be astronauts or doctors or whatever it is, every time we see one of those examples, it uplifts all of us because it helps all of us to imagine ourselves there. I can do that too. I can be president of the United States. I can be (laughs) vice president of the United States. Yeah. You know, I can be Oprah, 
You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone we it lifts us up. I can be I can be a Dr. Lisa, you know, that's what I'm talking that's about. Right. When I grow up to make a doll, you know. Exactly. Um, you know. Um, I mean I I, I think I, I tap into what you what you're saying because I when I when I was I created plus size fashion doll, right? And I Bravo, thought, by the way, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen your dolls. They're beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But I think that that representation too was so important. Size also matters, right? Right. You know, size is important too. And what I found was that when we created these dolls, we thought that it was going to be just, people were just going to be like clamoring because they, you know, it was like, oh, I'm so excited to be a plus size person. And it wasn't that way because I think at the same time, and I'm, you probably run into this, is that people still have a feeling of unworthiness, no matter, you know, what is represented or, you know, what is put out there. They still have this feeling of, I'm, I'm just not good enough where I am. And so I, I kind of got a little disillusioned because I really thought that people would you know, the people who were saying they were, you know, feeling good about themselves and they were plus size would gravitate to the doll. And yet when I really tapped into them, I realized that they still had their own issues of feeling good and they didn't want to see a doll that represented them. So um, do you find that to still be the case that even though people say we want to see black doll, but people are still not embracing, you know, um, uh, other doll, black doll artists that are out there trying to create dolls, you know, even when it comes to your dolls, do you still find that to be something that people are still having a, a problem with, of, you know, being true to who they are and loving who they are the way they are? Yes, and that's why I said that we're looking at it as also, you know, definitely showing you who you are, but also an educational tool because it's, and your dolls are gorgeous. So as you create gorgeous dolls and we do our best to create pretty dolls over here, that then people will see like, well, that doll's cute. That doll's kind of pretty. I, her skin is dark, but she's pretty. And you know, her lips are full, but she's pretty. So, and then that, that gradually gets you to see, well, mm. I got full lips, I got dark skin, my hair's curly like that. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, but, but you know, the, the first step is really, as you said, it is representation because you have to see it first before you can even begin to imagine it. So mm -hmm. even if like today, people don't recognize the beauty in your dolls or the beauty in black dolls, Sometimes people have to grow up to it or grow into it. Continue to do what you do. Eventually, you're probably ahead of your time and people will catch up to you. Well, I definitely what, know we were. Yes, definitely. This was that 20 was years ago. 2000, yes. back in 2000 or something like yes. that. I, I definitely know we were a little bit ahead of our time. But I was yes. just curious, you know, because you've been in there in that space for so long and you, uh, you know, you not just create little dolls, you create dolls for, for teenagers to understand that and to represent that too. How did that shift come about for you though? From well, we started dolls. out with the Positively Perfect line, which are our big baby dolls, right? The 18 inch mm -hmm. dolls. We started mm -hmm. with those and we started with our 14 inch toddler dolls and those did very well. And that's really where I was gonna stop. Stop, stop <laughs> right there. <laughs> but then I started seeing that older girls were having some self-esteem issues and recognizing their beauty and their power. And that's when I said, well, wait a minute, maybe I need to not just start with the babies, but grow with the girl and the boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that's when I started doing Fresh. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, Fresh really took off in a way that I'll be honest, I did not expect it to wow. do. I'm grateful. Oh, Lord knows I'm so grateful. But I did not ex expect Fresh to do what it's doing. Yeah. Wow. As a, as a doll collector, mm -hmm. I, you know, from being on the other side, it couldn't help but be successful. And the, the reason for that was, it goes back again to that diversity. Who had a Latina doll? I, you know, you Marisol. guys are all experts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marisol. <laughs> yeah, it's, like Mar it's like Marisol. It's like, who, who, nobody had, she wasn't there. She didn't exist, as far as I know. You know, and so again, it's like, the way diversity tends to work in the U.S. is black and white. Then we start adding, you know, a few brown people in, but it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's okay. Now we've got the Hispanics. Okay. But what happened to those of us who are mixed race? Mm -hmm. what, where are the mixed race dolls? And so mm -hmm. then that's why Marisol is so important, you know, because there are a lot of us who are black and Hispanic. And she didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And we just saw Mike Buse release the first vintage um, Latina doll. 
you know, so she looks, she, she fits in with Barbie's line, but she looked like us. She got beautiful curves, you know, <laughs> so you, you gotta, you gotta look at Miss Fabiola of Hollywood because she's fabulous. She's okay, fabulous. I have to check her out. <laughs> fabulous. Fabiola, fabulous. And, and so what happens is I think that we are just so excited when we see this other representation, when we see our other people, you know, because I have, my family is well blended. I mean, I've got sisters who are Korean and black and I'm, I mean, we, we are everywhere. And so it's like, oh, again, that looks like my, and that's what's important about, I think about your line mm -hmm. because it looks like my fill in the blank. You know, mm -hmm. so they, those dolls had to be successful. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. Thank those you. dolls had to be successful. Thank you. And, and, and that's what I wanted to, I wanted to, to create the best I could have, um, is I wanted there to be a, a Marisol or a Marisol, right? So who mm -hmm. who's, uh, who's Latina. And I wanted there to be an Ebony who's African, who's an Afro-Latina. Mm -hmm. I wanted that and I'm doing even more that's coming out mm -hmm. soon where we're doing Yay. blending of ethnicities because you're right that's what's in the world when I go into the world and I see people they're, so, they're just not black brown yellow they, you know it's a mm -hmm. beautiful collage a beautiful collection of skin tones and ethnicities and that's why when when I'm asked about the future of the business it's infinite because there's so many different infinite ethnicities and and blending of beautiful ethnicities so there's you know, our Asian and Blasian, you know, Black mm -hmm. and Asian is Black and Asian with a little bit of Latina. I mean, there's just a lot in, in yeah. my family as well. So yeah. I, yeah. they just, they're just so many dolls and ethnicities to represent. That's so exactly. great. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it's exciting. So you were saying about, so let's talk about that. What are you expanding to? I'm excited to hear ah, about that. <laughs> I want to tell more. Lord knows I want to tell more. I can't tell. Okay. Right now. You guys will have yeah, to have come back. back on. I was going to so say, you have to come back and tell us your goodies. <laughs> well, I can't even more. What I can share right now okay. is that the dolls will be in a movie this year. I can't share that. Oh, that's so great. So, yeah. Are you like a movie in a theater or on TV? Yes. What? In, in the a theater. theater, and then it's going to be on, I think it's BET and Lifetime. So oh, yes, so the movie is called Soul Santa. It oh, stars, nice. um, oh my gosh, David Mann and Tamala Mann are the stars. Mm -hmm. um, and it's coming out this Christmas, and mm -hmm. the dolls are in it. All the dolls. Me, Positively Perfect there is in it. Uh, the toddlers are in it, as well as Fresh and Fresh Squad. So it's the entire collection is going to be having their acting debut. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, so cool. great. So, so are, they, are they going to be like, just like in the, like in the background or are they really like, are they like part of the story, like characters? They are, so how much can I tell? They are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I'm thinking, how much can I, no, they're not in the background. So let me answer Okay, that. good. Okay. That's good. Not in okay. The they are, they are shots right the of the doll mm -hmm. and the actress talks about the dolls. So. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Very yeah, nice. That's so good. I, I just. I'm so excited. You should look at my face. Yeah. Just, my, my smile. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, I just love it when we're doing well. <laughs> Just, so do I, just, I. That's what it is all about supporting one another, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That yeah. is so I just, great. I, I can't wait for this movie. I'm, I'm excited about Christmas coming now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what my Christmas gift is. I'm excited to see There are it. actually a couple of movies. Actually, to be honest, there are three movies that also be in this Christmas. There are going to be nice. three of them. Oh. I can talk about that one. Right. Okay. <laughs> right, right. right now, I can't. So, okay. like I said, y'all have to have me back. We're gonna have you back. That is that is without a doubt. I can tell more about the other films that are coming out. That is so great. That is so cool. Yeah. So another thing that you've done that I think is amazing is um you've reached out to the community to ask the community to help you with your dolls. Oh yeah. So one of the sisters who we absolutely love and adore, Misha. Um Misha. I love me some Misha. Yes. We all love us some Misha. Yeah. When 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 we found out that she was going to be working with you with with you know a, a clothing line, it was just like Misha, because she is so Misha's just so humble and beautiful, and and it's like somebody you know somebody saw her talent, you know, and it's like yes, I can't imagine a better person. I mean, and it's thank you for reaching out and loving us. 
you know, and because yeah. you could have gone I'm out to, to cry now. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to make you cry, but you know the 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 thing to do. For, I mean, in, in most cases, people go out to a big name designer, you know, and they do, and and not that we love the big name designers too, you know, but that's what normally happens. We don't see somebody say, "Hey, let's go over to yeah. you know sister around around the corner down the street, <laughs> go ask our auntie to come over here and help us." We don't normally see us uplifting each other like that. So thank you for, you know, reaching into the heart, you know, and, and, and grabbing, you know, one of us who's, you know, just like Somebody everybody that's else. In the, in the dog community. You yeah. Know? So I think yeah. that's really, I think that's so important. I just think it's kind of like you were saying earlier, Tammy, about us. if one of us gets lifted up, we all get lifted up. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that's how I view it. So you're right. When I was thinking about, okay, I need help with the fashions and who can help me with that? It was going into our community. So yeah, it was Misha. And Misha's doll clothes are actually not only on our website, but they're actually in Walmart <laughs> and Target <laughs> and all the other places, um, Amazon. And then we also work with um, Nisi. Nisi is also doing some fashions for us. We nice. work with Brandon Zeck, who helps us with some of the hair. So yeah, I definitely pull from the doll community. And yes. what I'm doing is creating dolls for little girls and boys, as I said. But I want to also give the collectors and those that are so yes. amazingly talented a voice and an opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Because they're unsung heroes yeah yes. and I want them no longer yes. to be unsung I want them to be sung and so when I do my lives I talk about them I talk about the fashions that they've contributed if they're not too shy I ask them to come on and do a live with me <laughs> Misha's one of those that says uh-uh yes yes we know we try right okay so Misha's yeah, we like, love uh -uh. her no, no. yeah <laughs> but yes and her. I will continue continue to reach out we work with just people I just want to lift up the voices because, you know, I know how it is. I didn't have anyone that looked at, looked upon me in the doll world and said, hey, Dr. Lisa, let me come on over here. Let's pull you in. Let's, yes. let's give you yes. a voice. Let's give you a platform. Let's mentor you. Let's tutor mm -hmm. you. Let's, no one did that for me. Yes. And I think yes. if others had helped, we could even be further along in our representation, right? But yes. uh, I'm grateful for where we are. But also yes, I say, there are other people that need to have this opportunity. So yes, as we grow, as EPI grows, then Misha's coming along, Nisi's coming along, and you ladies are hopefully are coming along, Brandon's <laughs> coming along. Everybody that's helped, and I'm missing out names, so forgive me those of you who know I love you and I can't think of your names right now. But the idea is we all get lifted up together as this yes, small we, community. Yeah, yes. and that is, that, is, that is even more powerful. I mean, I, you know, okay, so I'm getting a little cheery out over here. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, when I when I thought about doing the, the doll show and I brought Tammy on, you know, it was because of that. It was because I was in the doll community and I knew all the amazing creators out there that needed to have uh, exposure and needed to be talked about. You know, and to 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 have this platform and not share that with other people outside of the doll community so they know who is doing work and they know who the creators are and the artists are and, you know, the customizers and designers. It's so, um, you know, I think that was my contribution, you know, to the community, you know, besides the dolls, but I, I wanted to be able to open up that platform for, for everybody, you know, just like you're doing. And I think that is so, I think that is like so powerful and so needed because, even in our conversations with people, even within this community and doing this show, there's still so many people who say, wow, I never heard about that person. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't know that person existed. I didn't know that person created dolls or that pre person created dioramas or clothes or whatever. So it's just, like you said, it's just an opportunity to expose other people to the amazing creative people and especially amazing creative people of color in this community that people do not ever see or never know about. And so thank you so much for doing that, for having yes. them to be a part of your growth. You know, uh, that's really appreciated. And what we're doing, Georgette, is we do that, you and Tammy too, as we do that, we're creating a legacy. You know, like we have a certain amount of time that, that God has appointed us to be on this earth, whatever that is, we don't know what it is, right? But after, speaking for myself, and I think I'm speaking for you ladies too, but after we go, we don't want this mission to go with us, right? right. So I want to leave here so that the Mishas of the world are well-platformed to do the next thing, or the nieces of the world are well-platformed to do the next, or the Brandons of the world, or the, you know, the dog, mm -hmm. the, the people that we work with. And I want also to attract other people of color. And part of the reason that we don't see a lot of diversity on the shelf 
is because there's not a lot of diversity creating the dolls that are on the shelf, right? We all create through our own eyes and our own experiences. So if you have one group primarily with that experience creating dolls, you kind of mm -hmm. get the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So as we bring in more people with different experiences and different perspectives, we get a wider variety on the shelf. So if I can do something during this short lifetime that I have to give exposure to others with different perspectives, different viewpoints, different ethnicities, if I can help them get their foot into the toy community so that they can do their own thing in the toy mm -hmm. community, right. that's a gift not only to me and my company, what they do, but it's a gift to them, mm -hmm. their families, and the doll community and children of all ethnicities around the world. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, so it's, that's true. it's very, it's very dear to my heart to support and I support in helping other doll creators, but also like I was talking about earlier, giving to orphanages of children, yeah. uh, establishing scholarships that like at Tuskegee University. It's all about, it's all about giving back. It's kind of like you said, a 360 give back. Mm -hmm. So I give to the children, I give to the parents so that they have things in their toolkit to educate their children. I give to dog community enthusiasts and talented creatives. And then we also give, as I said, to scholarships and orphanages and children's organizations and foster kids, because that's what we're here for. It's okay. It's okay. It's like everybody's tearing up. This is, this is such a beautiful interview. I mean, because we all, the passion, all, we are all driven by passion. We're, we're, and, and that's what we're seeing here. You know, this is this is our passion, and our children are our passion, and they are our future, and yeah. that's what we're doing. And so, like for in the doll world this year, we're focusing on diversity, and so that's why we had the and, and that's where we were, first um, did some work with you. We asked you to join us in our, our Black Doll Celebration, and that goes back to we keep hearing from people around the world we can't find a black doll. <laughs> We cannot find a black doll. And so those of us who are in this arena know there are many of them out there, but it goes back to whose doll is on the shelf. And that's where you are super important because your doll is actually on the shelf in the store. Yeah. You know, most of the dolls that are being created are not on the shelf. We all know that. It's just some sliver of the dolls that are created because people don't have the money to put them out there. So that was mm -hmm. part of the black doll uh, celebration so that we can see, you know, Pat McLean Smith, who's over there crocheting her dolls, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, just all these other, you know, small doll makers who are making dolls who don't have their babies in the store. So yeah. they can help to connect them. I, one of the Kardashians a, a few years ago was looking for a doll. She's got a biracial baby. She's like, where the black dolls? And it's like, wait a minute, if she can't find a black doll, what a black doll. <laughs> she could go and buy her kid a $500 doll, $1,000 doll. She can't find a black doll. So yeah. for those of us who, you know, don't have that kind of money and we can spend, I don't know, $20 on a doll or 50, you know, 80, whatever it is that you can spend on a doll. It's like, where's, where's that doll? Yeah. So you are, you are just critical. I just, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I feel yeah. like I'm starting to preach. You guys, but it's just, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> gonna make me cry no but it is because when it you is, walk yeah. down the aisles it is so critical to see those dolls up there right and to know that the person who created those dolls you know is from the community right and it's about diversity and it's about representation and 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 uh you know uh just reflecting on our history in general uh yeah. even in the within the doll world um i think having your dolls on the shelf is so important because there is a there is another level of you not just creating, but you now manufacturing and getting shelf space. That's yes, man. It's a whole nother, you know, monster right there. You know, yeah. so uh, so since we since I did bring that up, I want I do want you to talk a little bit because I even in the dog community, there's a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, and it's about mm -hmm. and the business and creating businesses that are sustainable and you know, be able to have a business that you could transfer to your family and generations down. How was manufacturing for you? Because I know you said that you didn't have a lot of mentors. So how was, who mentored you through that process and how was your manufacturing? Uh, how did that go for you? Because people have an idea. I want to create a doll. That's, yeah, that's great. But what do you need to do to do that? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, oh boy, that's a great question. So when it comes to uh, manufacturing, that's like the, it makes or breaks you. It's your Achilles mm -hmm. heel. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have mentoring either. I really found out so much by bruised knees, falling, failing. I failed so many times, but as they say, you fail forward, right? Instead of getting discouraged. And I did. So I'm not trying to say I never got discouraged. Right. But certainly I did. And there were some days I said, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Lord, you, I, I gave it my best shot. Jesus, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I could count the number of times I said that. And I was serious. It wasn't just saying, I'm done. And then I wake up the next morning and, and something had happened. God had created a miracle. You know, somebody calls you or whatever. So, uh, so that's kind of how I stayed in it. It wasn't that I was that um, optimistic all the time. Because creating a doll line and a doll company is not hard. I'm not easy. It's incredibly hard. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Seriously, in, including wow. being a mother. <laughs> this <laughs> doll company is probably the hardest thing. But in terms of asking your question specifically, the factor is the Achilles heel, right? You can come yeah. up with a great vision of what you want this doll to be. But you have to have a factory partner that sees it or is willing at least to listen to you as you explain what you're trying to do. Because so many of them want to revert back to what's easy. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already done a doll that looks like this. How about we take this doll and mm -hmm. paint it brown? Or how about we take this doll and add a little bit fuller lip? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I need to start from scratch. I need this to be from my heart and my mind. Right. So you got to get a factor that's willing to listen. And then you got to get one that's willing to learn because a lot of the things that we're doing, like the custom blended skin tone, different hair types, like doing the braids and all over the hair braids. They were like, no, 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 no. You don't want to put braids all over a doll's head. That's too expensive. I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to put a braid on. <laughs> um, so those kinds of things, you have to have a partner that's willing to listen. And then it's the money. The money is, is yes. it's hard. Ooh, you yeah. have to come up with a lot. You a ladies lot know. You create yes. a lot of yes. money. Hmm. Thousands, tens of thousands <laughs> of dollars you have to come up with. And yeah. with me not having any financial support or mentoring, I did what, you know, all the black entrepreneurs that I've heard, like the Spike Lee's of the world, I started out by maxing out the credit card. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And then after that, I took out a um, second mortgage on my house. And uh, then I tapped in and took out all of my retirement fund. So I, mm -hmm. you know, if I was a, well, my husband say I am a gambler, but I'm saying if I'm a gambler, <laughs> I literally went all in with the chips, all, all on the table because this company meant so much to me. And I kept feeling that it could work if I could just get the dolls made, manufactured and on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, finding yeah. a good factory yes. is also hard because if yes. you don't know anyone, it's like a secret society. Yes, it is. Because no one's common. Put, yeah, yeah, no one puts their factory on the back of their box. So you don't right. know any of the dolls. So you have, where do you go? So then you hopefully identify, find two or three, then you have to go and check them out, make sure they adhere to all the safety standards and the human rights issues. Then you got to find one that's willing to listen and do it totally different than what they've known how to do before. And then you got to find one that <laughs> may be willing to give you some terms or at least work with you on right. some level in regards mm -hmm. to financing. Mm -hmm. Then it's about getting the dolls from China over yep. to the U.S. Yes. So there's freight forwarding, there's containers, there's shipping issues, mm -hmm. this is customs. And I've had dolls held up in customs for three weeks. <laughs> Uh, which misses Christmas. There's just a whole lot of things that yeah. go into it. But yeah, um, we've, we've heard a lot of COVID, wow. COVID stories. Yeah. I, oh, yes. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, dolls yeah. sitting there on the, on the port. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. I've had that happen. Yeah. And they charge you thousands of dollars a day while the dolls are sitting there and you can't Ooh. get to your dolls and you have to pay the, the yep. money until they release your goods. Yeah. Wow. Mm, see, I, I mean, I'm so really glad you shared that, that because yes. I, I, I just think it's so important because it, you know, it does help you to see, okay, yes, I can have this vision, but if I want to create this vision, I have to be all in because mm -hmm. this is the way it is, you know, I mean, uh, back when we did it, we didn't, we didn't visit anything, you know, I don't even know if we were even dealing with the child laws back in 1999, but just, I mean, Percy Newsom was really helpful to us because we found his name on the box. So if your, your doll was back then, I probably would have been calling you. So because <laughs> I was looking at boxes in the store, like, okay, who made these dolls, you know, that I want to, you know, make, you know, that look similar to what I wanted to do. And his, and Integrity Toys came up and he was in Maryland and we were in New Jersey and we were like, hey, maybe we could do that. And so I, we called him and he was kind of like our mentor and he was the one who connected us to a manufacturer and then a sculptor for That's our him. doll. 
Yes. Oh, bless him. I don't yeah. know him, but that's, oh, yeah. Bless him. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of kicked us off. And, and, and so you're, you're right about manufacturing. You have to really source that and people keep it into like their own little, if they find somebody, trust me, you're not getting in there. I mean, it's like, it's like a secret you know, like a secret handshake thing you got to have to do that. <laughs> it is. It, is. it, it's, so it truly, truly is. It really, truly so let, is. Let me so. ask you a question then about manufacturing, because this keeps coming up for us. Why isn't anybody in America manufacturing? Great question. We're not manufacturing because the cost of manufacturing here in the United States is too expensive. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so everyone's doing their manufacture primarily in Asia, primarily in China. That's why. And uh, I know... I used to go to Congress every year. And so several years ago, and I would go and lobby to try to keep some of the costs and expenses down for small entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in the toy industry. Um, they, Congress was kept asking us, why are you guys shipping all of your money over to China? I personally want to keep the money here. I would love to manufacture here in the U.S. There's so yeah, many reasons too. why, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to support mm -hmm. the community. You want to give jobs to the community. It's shorter lead times. You have greater, you have yeah. greater access to it. You can go in and look at your factory and see how your product is being made. But it's so expensive here in the U.S. Unfortunately, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's what that's what we keep hearing, and yeah. you know that. And I I think that I am probably approached at least monthly. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. every couple of weeks, someone comes to me and says, "I want to make a doll," mm -hmm. and and then the whole conversation is like. And so I start with, "Can you uh, do you have enough money that you know you can pay for a house? Can you lose the mortgage? Because that's what you're gonna risk." Yep, if you got yep. that kind of money and you're good with losing it, then you should make a doll yeah. because you could lose it. I mean, hopefully you don't, but <laughs> I, I, I lost it. I, I missed that piece in my story, but, yes. I it. but I ended up losing my house because <gasps> of it. Oh, you ladies don't. Oh, let me tell y'all. <laughs> what? So, yeah. wow. I absolutely lost my house. Yep. I lost my house and I was I, not only did I lose my house, I lost my house, I lost my car. At that time, I was driving like a $90,000 BMW or a Mercedes because I was a college professor. And so I was right. like, it's raining college. So I was well paid. Um, but I went from that to literally driving what, what my cousins would call a hoopty. So I went from a $90,000 car to like a $1,500 car, had no air conditioning wow. in it. <laughs> and I'm driving around in that. I lost my house. I had to move into an apartment. Uh, but, and through all of that, my family was very supportive and um, right. my kids just roll with it. My husband, we just roll with it and we just oh. kept moving until where wow, we kind awesome. of are now. But yeah, no, I sacrificed quite a lot financially. Yeah. For the wow. wow. I did not realize that. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was not an easy journey. I say it, maybe I should give more specifics because I say it was not an easy journey, but it was not an easy journey. Financially, it ruined journey. us. Yeah, yeah. Financially, it ruined us. And that's why I say there are some days I'm like, I'm done. I've Lord, I'm yeah. out. <laughs> I've yeah. given all. But then, like I yeah. said, you go to bed, like you're out, and then you wake up in the morning, and, and you're, back in. Somebody, <laughs> you're back in because somebody <laughs> didn't call you, or you got an email, or or you get it. Literally, sometimes it was just an email from some some parent saying to me, my daughter loves your doll. See? Oh. My daughter loves your doll, and she won't leave the house without your doll. That says, okay, Lord, I'm making a difference. So then yeah. you get back in. But yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. And you are right. When you tell people, if you're not willing to lose everything you have, you, yeah. you need to think about it because yeah. you will, yeah. I have lost, yeah. I've lost quite a bit. Wow. wow. But you have gained so much more. And I, but yes. I've gained, you know, yes, yeah. but I've gained. And you have to see past that, right? I get right. that. Yeah. yeah, right. It's just, it's, it's the experience of being an entrepreneur. And I don't yep. wish this on anybody. Yes, I'm not saying all entrepreneurs go through this because some people just hit it. They have a success and it goes yeah. through. That just wasn't my story. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's an entrepreneurial journey, man. That, you know, that fire that, that keeps you moving, you know, regardless of, of, yeah. of the situation. And so uh, I'm so glad that you decided to, uh, to keep moving. And I'm so glad there was things that were put in your way to keep you going. To, yes. to, the, to that process because, um, you know, your dolls are so needed and your dolls are so beautiful and, yes. they, and they represent such a, a wide variety of, um, you know, different flavors and colors. And we, we're yeah. just, we just so yeah, we're blessed to have them. Yes. I just, one I just want to say that to one last thing I wanted to say is thank you for that. And I also want to say that's what I also give back a great appreciation to the doll community. Because not only do I include people like Nisha and uh, Nisi and others in, in the helping with the fashions, but I actually have lives. And when I have my life, I ask the fans, I ask the Fresh family, 
what do you want to see in this doll? What should I do next? You know, whether it's mm -hmm. fashions, whether there's features, whatever. And so they tell me, and then I do my best to give them what they want. So it really is collaborative. I don't create the dolls by myself. I don't. I have, like mm -hmm. I said, I have the fresh family that gives me direction of what they want to see. And then I have a team, a very small team, but I have a team that helps me to execute. So no one does anything alone. And mm -hmm. certainly that's my story. I don't do anything alone. Without the fresh family, I wouldn't be here. The, their loyal support. And it's whether they, and I tell them all the time, it doesn't matter whether they buy a doll. If, they, if you don't buy a doll, you got, they do. I feel them. They say prayers. They wish us well. They post the dolls. They share. They tell other people. And then they tell me what, what to do next to give them more room what they want. So I am forever indebted and grateful to the Fresh family. You're a beautiful, humble person. It's such a lovely interview. It, it, it is. It's so heartfelt. I, I, I wanted to ask you um, the one more question. And that is, we were recently interviewed and someone asked us about the future of dolls. What do you see as a future? What, what do you, what's, what's coming up? They mean in terms of whether dolls are gonna survive technology or just in general, in terms of what's happening in the doll world, doll community? I think that they were asking what's, so the way that I took the question was, how do we continue to create dolls in a world where we're using resources, the way that we're using, you know, we're running out of resources where there's all these issues with plastics and whatever. And so, you know, my response was, I responded what I thought was going to happen on an ecological level, you know? And it's interesting because I didn't know the Barbie was going to do what they did, but it's like, we have to start recycling. You know, we, we can't afford to keep doing this. So. What do you see as far as the environmental impact of dolls and doll production? How, what do you see the future and, and how do you, what's your part in that? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, I do see that, like you said, we have limited resources and we don't want to have the dolls continue to fill up landfills after they've been well loved. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, we are starting to now, we are having internal team plans about what we can do for sustainability, not only in packaging, which is kind of mm -hmm. the, I want to say the easiest, but it's the lowest hanging fruit to change mm -hmm. in terms of our packaging, but also mm -hmm. in terms of the doll. And so we're trying to use uh, on our, on the clothes or the fabrics, recycled material that as best we can to keep the authenticity of the doll, but mm -hmm. also to help the environment and uh, and the ecology of the of the world because we we are we have some responsibility there because mm -hmm. we're using plastics that are not degradable so we're always exploring ways of doing something that will be uh, much more sustainable and reusable so there may be some opportunities for us to kind of take the dolls back and repurpose them we're looking mm -hmm. at a lot of different things internally oh that's mm -hmm. great that's wonderful yes. to be able to do that yeah yeah that, that that's good what, that's what i was hoping you know is we, we can't continue i mean those of us who love dolls you know, we have, we, I think we have to look at our footprints too. And what can we do to make the world better for, um, for dolls and our future generations? So Dr. Lisa, it's been amazing. It's been heartwarming. It's just, all of our interviews are different. And it, it's, it's funny how sometimes you feel like you walk in the room and you walked in the room and you happened upon you know, a you're conversation have your soul <laughs> spoken to mm -hmm. thank you thank you for your humbleness and thank you for for this interview so um we're going to ask you where can people if they are interested in finding out more about you and the world of epi fresh dolls where how do they reach out to you uh, they could reach out by our website thefreshdolls.com and uh, we're on Instagram, same thing, the fresh or at <laughs> the fresh doll. And I have an Instagram page, which is at the Dr. Lisa. Okay. Great. Like that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you for being on In the Doll World with us, Dr. Lisa. It's been amazing. As Tammy said, it's been like yes. uh, just a, you know, a real warm conversation talking about representation, how important it is, you know being an entrepreneur how crazy it is <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know and just being somebody that is driven to uh want to showcase the beauty and and in all children and people and i and i really appreciate that and and love and love love what you do and uh 
will continue to support what you do and mm-hmm. uh, excited and excited to have you back too to talk more definitely about, yes about where, where you're going with we're, that, yeah so. we're looking forward to hearing about yeah. what's going on and the wonderful things you're doing I definitely yes. will come back. And I just want to also say, I want to thank you ladies, not only for getting the word out to the community, but I, I stand on your shoulders without the work that you did in the world, without the world work that you did in the toy, I wouldn't be here either. So I stand on your shoulders and I applaud you and thank you for being courageous women of power and courage to create a doll line of representation that allows me a place to create a line of representation. So I thank you. My hat off. Oh, oh well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That means, yes. wow. That means, okay, I'm getting teary eyed. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Oh, oh, the the crying crying oh, yeah, that was so much fun. Thank oh you, ladies. It was, it was amazing. It was yes. amazing talking to both of you. Thank and I look so forward much. to coming back. I'm going to hold you to it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Yes, I mean, we'll so. definitely do that. Yes. So thank so. you for joining us in the doll. My pleasure.